to another edition of NPU Weekly, the weekly webcast show that brings you up to date on all the latest news of Nor in the world of North Park Athletics. I am your host, Kevin Shepke, and for the first half of the show, we'll be talking with head coach Mike Conway of the North Park football team. Um, unfortunately, the Vikings are coming off a 31-28 loss to Concordia University, Chicago, or excuse me, Concordia University, Wisconsin, uh, this past uh, Saturday night, but still with the season opener for both uh, teams. Vikings uh, had some pretty solid individual uh, performances as well as just an overall strong team performance. Um, then later on in the show, um, I'll be taking you around the horn and updating you on the latest news on um, the, um, the other uh, sports going on in the fall season. So, how you doing, Mike? I'm good, man. Good to be with you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about um, uh, Saturday night's game. Um, unfortunately, yeah, you guys had a 31-28 loss, but I think probably the biggest thing to talk about here was you guys were down 28 to 13 in this game, 14 to nothing actually in this game, and you come back to tie it at 28-28. Talk a little about the resiliency of the guys and able to come back and just you know do that for what uh, what was a, just an unbelievable comeback. Well, yeah, I mean we were, you know, we're we like to think that we're fighters and uh, we're going to fight every game for four quarters, no matter who we play against and uh, no matter what the score is. And uh, if you fight for four quarters and you play that way, you got a chance to win. Mm -hmm. Some of them you're going to win. And uh, we almost won that one. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I think it was, uh, I mean, it was just an amazing uh, atmosphere. It was a lot of fans. It was exciting. And, you know, I think somebody told me, you know, nobody left. Mm -hmm. I mean, we gave, them, uh, we gave them a pretty darn good game. It was... Uh, Probably atmosphere that we haven't had at North Park for a football game yeah. for a while, mm -hmm. so it was pretty exciting. You've seen a lot more than I have, but <laughs> yeah, it was I pretty fun. That. It was, uh, you know, you're going in, uh, you're going into, uh, you know, we held them for uh, almost uh, the whole last two quarters. I mean, they scored a field goal uh, with uh, 40 some seconds to go right. in, in the uh, game, and. We held them down there and gave our kids a chance to go down. We only had 40 seconds. We didn't have a timeout, and mm -hmm. you know we threw one to the end zone and almost caught it. Yeah, darn near would have been a an unbelievable, uh, unbelievable comeback and it'd be an unbelievable victory. But you know we don't always measure victories. Uh, there are small victories in games and in programs, and I think us to be able to compete against a team like North, uh, like uh, Concordia, Wisconsin, who's a playoff team and they're eight and two last year. They went to the playoffs and. For us to be able to, you know, to, to, to bang with them for four quarters and be there at the end, I mean, I think it's a, I guess you can call it not a moral victory, but in some ways, you know, we're progressing, I think, as a program and playing against better people and we're competing. You know, so as much as we'd like to make that catch at the end, and there's a lot of other things we'd like to have done better in the mm -hmm. game, you know, the kids fought and they played as hard as they could, and I couldn't ask for anything more than that. Mm -hmm. Talk a bit about um, what the offense was able to do. 99 offensive plays. Uh, I'm, st I'm still trying to look in, in, into a, a record book to see if that is a record. I haven't found it yet, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that it is a record. I think 99 offensive plays is... That's the first time North Park has ever recorded something like that in a game. Talk a bit about um, what you guys were able to do in that sense. Well, I mean, that's attributed to uh, to our coaching staff offensively. I thought the guys did a great job of controlling the football and, and moving it down and being patient, you know, um, and executing for the most part. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you get 500-plus you get yards and, you know, you have 31 first downs, you're doing something right, mm -hmm. I mean, offensively. Yeah. I mean, it is, <laughs> it's pretty good. I mean, but... You know, we missed a couple opportunities to get points down in the red zone, mm -hmm. you know, which we'd have liked to have. And obviously at the end of the game, not only touchdowns would have been great down there, but a couple couple field goals would yeah. have been would have been good. But yeah. it's the way it goes. And we still had an opportunity to, to, to win the game. So mm -hmm. to me there's so much area for improvement um, uh, on every on every phase of the game for us. But mm -hmm. I think offensively, you know, it, you know, we threw for almost 400 yards, and yeah. I think our our running backs, you know, our running backs performed as well as those two guys that performed. I mm -hmm. mean, they their first and second guys missed them. I mean, yeah. they made yeah. people miss, and they <laughs> ran hard, and they got first downs on fourth down when we needed them. And you know, I thought we executed very well for the most part. Mm -hmm. And uh, the good thing is, you know, you have so much, so much more of a, um, so much more of an area for improvement mm -hmm. that. You know, I think our guys are confident about uh, how we hung in there with those guys. And, but offensively, John Bear and, you know, our guys offensively, I thought, did a great job of preparing for an opener, which you really don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. And actually, they didn't do what we expected them to do defensively. Mm -hmm. So we made some good adjustments offensively and, 
you know, we, we did a great job. I was really proud of the guys, proud of the coaches, and, uh, you know, I was proud of the, uh, of the offensive football players, too, mm -hmm. all the way across. Mm -hmm. Talk about, uh, too, the, just the atmosphere. I know you and I touched on it briefly. Um, a near sellout crowd, I think we had the, over 2,100 people was the recorded attendance. Talk about just what that what that meant, not just for the team, but you know, for former players that were in attendance, alumni that was in attendance, parents, every, just everybody that, that was there. Talk about what kind of atmosphere it was for them out there. Well, it's it's what it's what our it's what our program deserves, mm -hmm. you know, and it's what our kids deserve, I think. And uh, you know, we we uh, respected our military. It was a military appreciation day, and we uh, we had great uh, we had we had color guard. We had uh, uh, we had a, a cool tunnel that the U.S. the uh, Go Army dot Go Army gave us, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. uh, we, we recognized uh, we recognized our ROTC program and the uh, Army Reserve area in this area, and uh, we had great military per military personnel there, and it was really fun. I mean, I think it provided to help the environment, but I think mm -hmm. a lot of people are excited about Viking football for uh, first time in a while. So mm -hmm. I think uh, it meant a lot. I mean, it meant a lot that we have a chance to. And the Vikings have taken the field. So the Falcons mixing up their plays nicely. Have the ball at the 35. Damaschke back to throw. Picked off! Philip Pendleton picks off the air and throw. He's at the 30, cutting back to the far sideline. He's at the 40. He's at the 50. He's at the 40, cutting back inside. He's at the 30. He's at the 20, finally dragged out from behind at the CUW 15-yard line. That will be half the distance of the goal. Ball is on the two-yard line now. First and goal for the Vikings. And this will be DJ Jones into the end zone for the touchdown. DJ Jones with a two-yard touchdown run up the middle. And the Vikings are... T.D. Conway looking to the far side. And it's caught for a touchdown! Caught in the far corner of the end zone. We're going to have to wait and see who caught that. I think it's Delgado, number... It's Dakota Conway, number eight, who made the... Back to throw is Conway looking for the far corner of the end zone. Touchdown, North Park! Dan Anderson on the catch. Back after a very difficult uh, first half, but it looked like one of those games where the last team to... Uh, had the ball, might have, might have, might have pulled off the win, but unfortunately, the Vikings probably just a little too far away from the end zone on that last play. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're we're playing against an opener against an NCAA Division III playoff team that uh, won their leg and has picked to win their league again, and that's very talented, and they have seniors uh, who play together for a long time, and you know, you gotta you gotta give them credit. But to be honest with you, we gave them all they wanted tonight, and I'm proud to say that. I'm proud to say that uh, our kids played their hearts out every single position on every single side of the ball. Um, we held that team to three points in the second half of the defense. And that team averaged almost 48 points a game last year, and they're a legitimate, great offensive football team with great players. And uh, I can't be more proud of our defensive guys, especially in that second half. Gave us a chance. We had a couple big, big interceptions, and at least two huge interceptions by Craig Butler. If he wouldn't have ran out of gas, he'd have probably scored. And who knows? I mean, you know that. And then uh, we had another big interception by Brandon Dahl down here. He took it all the way down, and we put that one in the box. So I mean, defensively, I don't know if I could be more proud of our guys right now and how hard they played. And it was rough. I mean, we had to make some adjustments at halftime, and I think that they were good ones. And um, you know, offensively, I mean. 
we moved the football against a, a pretty good football team and consistently. You know, you get four or five hundred yards of offense and, uh, you know, you're doing something and we're doing something. And uh, we got a little tired at times on defense, but we started rotating some guys in, some young guys that were playing their first football game for us. And I was proud of them. They did a good job. And offensively, you know, when you get a, you get a chance to, your defense puts you in position to have a chance to throw the ball in the end zone to win the game. And that's, that's an awesome deal. I mean, I, against a really good team. So I'm really proud of the guys in general. Um, a little disappointed in our kicking game when we gave away seven points there. You know, we didn't get a PAT and we missed two two field goals. You know, it kind of probably hurt our opportunities to get points earlier in the game because we couldn't kick it any kick, kick, kick it through. I mean, I, I feel bad for Noah. I think he'll come back and you know, but you know, that's seven points we lost. That seven points that we couldn't use here at the end of this thing. And uh, but I'm, I'm you know, in general, we'll try to get that taken care of hopefully and. But I saw guys like DJ Jones and Drew Washington uh, run the ball like I've never seen them run before. I mean, I'm just, I'm just really proud of those guys and how hard they, how hard they played today too. And I don't know what their stats are, but there were some runs that were just outstanding out there. And you know, TD made some mistakes and made some bad reads and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, you know, he's still going to do some of those things. And you know, we, we had some protection issues and they. And they got after us a little bit, and we couldn't we couldn't protect a few times, and he probably bailed out of there early, early like he shouldn't have a couple times, but that's the way it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, to uh, we are a continuation of uh, North NPU weekly uh, weekly webcast show um, here on this uh, Monday evening. We want to apologize. We had a slight uh, technical difficulty with our interview with uh, Coach Conway, and um, we unfortunately lost the last 10 minutes of that interview, but um, he and I were just discussing a little bit about um, uh, next week's upcoming game against Alma College, um, and he said that they're going to prepare for him just like they do any other opponent, which uh, is uh, hopefully what the Vikings will be able to do is just uh, go ahead and uh, uh, repeat a lot of the things that they did this past weekend and hopefully come out with a victory over Alma as they will be out at Alma College um, this Saturday. Um, in Michigan. So um, let's go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about more about some of the other sports going on on campus. Um, probably the hottest team on campus right now. We're going to show you some highlights from their first two uh, games of the season, once uh, against Benedictine and against St. Mary's University of Minnesota. It was the men's soccer team. Um, they are just on a hot streak right now. They have um, gone up on a 4 0 record um, and they have uh, been outscoring their opponents by a 12 to 1 score. Um, they went out to uh, Concordia University, Wisconsin, and Mequon, uh, Wisconsin this past weekend uh, and defeated St. John's uh, University by a 3 nothing score. Frederick Grafe ended up scoring the game winner for the Vikings um, in that contest. Um, actually got two game winners uh, over this past weekend. Grafe um, in the St. John's game and then also in North Park's 2 to nothing victory over um, Concordia University, Wisconsin. Um, on Sunday, so uh, great with a, a game winner there as well. And uh, Pedro Kahneman Mosley ended up scoring the second goal for the Vikings uh, in that game. But uh, let's go ahead and show you some of the highlights um, from North Park's first two games against uh, St. John's, of, or excuse me, St. Mary's, Minnesota, and Benedictine. And uh, here those are. Now here on the near side, he's going to use those long legs to try and shake back three defenders. Does it? Takes a shot. And it hits the crossbar. Oh, and it's another oh. shot. Another shot. Um, yes, we got it a goal. goal! Number 24 scored the goal! Number 24! Oh my goodness! What a set of plays that was right there. Oh my goodness! Number 24, Frederick Anderson, a sophomore from El Cajon, California, puts it away for the Vikings. Okay, looks like we got a corner kick for North Park here. Corner kick for the Vikings as the ball went out of bounds. Yeah. And a goal! And a, goal. Oh. a goal by number 17! That being number 17, Marcus Holton! Oh my goodness! Go so go so go so! 42 11 left here in the second half, and the Vikings now lead 2 to nothing. Oh my goodness! What an unbelievable shot by number, by number 17! Number 17, Marcus Holton, the forward for the Vikings, off a corner kick. Free kick now here for number 32, Frederick Grafe. 
Grafe tries to play it in. He's got another play. Trying to slide it. And it's a goal. Oh. Another goal. From Pemishov Zabilski. Pemishov Zabilski scores. Off an assist from Felipe Matar. Oh my goodness. Zabilski, his first goal of the season. With 37-39 left in the game. Off an of a, um, unbelievable cross pass. Unbelievable cross pass there. Pemishov Zabilski. Unbelievable play. That goal is put in! It is a goal! Goal so goal so goal so! Vikings score! Number 8, Pedro Tommy Mosele puts the shot away with 11-11 remaining here in the first half. And the Vikings have taken a 1-0 lead on the goal by Pedro Tommy Mosele. Paisley trying to create something now on the, far, on the near corner sideline. Tries to take a shot, and he hits it! Oh my goodness, what a goal! What a goal by this, and Daniel Paisley, he just buries a shot right up in the top right corner of the net. Unbelievable shot by Paisley. You can't ask for a better shot than that. Okamba, waiting for his, waiting for the setup. And there's one, Lassie puts it in at 13-15 remaining in the contest. Diego Lassie puts a shot in for the Vikings off a corner kick pass on that. Oh my goodness, that's an unbelievable play. Assist from number 35, Stanley Locoma on the goal, Diego Lassley. Go so, go so, go so. Go for North Park. Yeah, we'd like to welcome you back to NPU Weekly. Um, going over some of the other uh, teams uh, that were in action this past week, uh, the women's volleyball team um, uh, returned home after um, uh, competing in the Sugarloaf Classic out in Minnesota in the opening weekend of the season. Um, and they had their eighth annual uh, Viking Clash over, over the weekend where uh, six teams competed. Fortunately, the Vikings um, came out with a one and three record, but um, the team that they did defeat was uh, Knox College by a 25-15, 25-16, 25-21 uh, score. Uh, and we'll, um, that was the first game of, of the uh, weekend for the Vikings. And we have a couple highlights from uh, North Park's uh, tournament as well. Um, some of the, the leaders uh, for North Park uh, in that tournament were uh, Haley Break, who on uh, the second day of the tournament averaged 12.5 kills per set, as well as uh, Mona Lisa Fasavelu, who um, averaged 10.5 kills per set um, on the second day of the tournament. Uh, it was uh, North Central College, one of North Park's college conferences in Illinois and Wisconsin Falls that ended up winning the tournament with a perfect 4-0 record. Um, and the Vikings uh, finished in the middle of the pack with a 1-3 record. So let's go ahead and show you some of the highlights from um, that, uh, that uh, weekend's uh, matchups as well for the Vikings. Alexis Clay on that dig. Set up to Haley Break. Nice kill by Haley Break, and she's going to get that for North Park for North Point Park. Vikings. Savone Williams on that play gets it over to Switzer. Switzer back to Williams. Williams, nice kill, and it's now 16 to 7 North Park. Williams. Nice hit there by a huge hit by Haley Break. Thunderous kill there by Haley Break to tie the score at 3 3 of our North Park. Thunderous kill there by Haley Brake. Number 13 now serving for the Dutch. Bossevelli wins that one. Gets over to Brake. Nice kill there again by Brake. Just coming up with some big key uh, kills in this matchup to keep North Park in contention as the uh, Vikings now move ahead 17 to 11. Dutch. Nice tip killed by uh, Darby Switzer. Alexis Clay over to Switzer. Over to break. A kill by break. Nice kill there by break. Just comes off that, that assist there by Clay and puts it down to give the Vikings now a uh, 20 to 18 advantage. Okay. okay. Once again, uh, to MP Weekly. Just uh, going over some of, uh, some of the other uh, uh, highlights of the teams this past week, and we already touched a little bit on men's soccer. We talked talk a little bit about um, 
uh, volleyball. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the women's soccer team. Uh, women's soccer, unfortunately, they had uh, lost their first three games of the season, um, but came back strong on um, Saturday and defeated um, Beloit College up in Beloit, Wisconsin, by an eight nothing score. Uh, Elizabeth Heidenstrom um, had two goals in the game, including the game winner. Emma Lindine also had two goals in the game, as did Haley Rogers um, have two goals in the game. Um, we do have a little bit um, of uh, highlights that we can show you from uh, North Park's first home game they had last Wednesday. So let's uh, go ahead and show you that as well. As we were hoping to uh, bring you some of the highlights of tonight's uh, North Park women's uh, soccer match. The Vikings unfortunately lost the contest by a 4-2 to two score against the University of Dubuque this evening, but um, unfortunately due to some internet connections that we had out at the Home Grand Athletic Complex, we unfortunately were not able to get um, any of the goals that were scored by the Vikings on video, um, so unfortunately we weren't able to um, bring that to you. Um, we do have some of the highlights of uh, some of the defensive plays and some of the near shots that the Vikings did almost get uh, for in, in tonight's game. Um, the Vikings uh, fell behind one nothing in this game to start, but then they came back uh, to take a uh, to tie the game at one one after Emily Dean scored um, in the fourth minute. But then uh, the Spartans just went on and, and scored three goals uh, from there on out and took a four to one lead at halftime. But um, North Park did add one more goal uh, in the second half on Viviana Preciano's uh, score with about six minutes left in the contest. Um, biggest highlight of this evening was the, the stellar defensive play of keeper uh, Megan Durkee, who made uh, ten saves in her first in her, in her first uh, start as as the keeper for the Vikings. Uh, she is normally a position player, so we do like as I said. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any of those. Um, goals that were scored by the Vikings on video, but we do have a couple of highlight, highlight plays that we'll bring to you right now um, from what we were able to capture uh, from this evening's contest. And it's picked up by uh, Haley Rogers. Rogers back over to Preciado. Preciado gets it over to Annika Nyquist. Nyquist now has a little bit of daylight here on the near side. She's going to go ahead and center the ball back up. A little higher. The shot is taken, but Haley Rogers just misses that shot. Annika Nyquist now here on the near side, just outside the box. Now she's inside the box. She's going to go ahead and try and center it. Gets the ball over to Haley Rogers. Haley Rogers just misses it. Gets the ball back over to Hollingar. Hollingar takes a shot, but it goes up and looks like we may have a little bit of a tussle. <laughs> Dubuque now puts this deep into North Park territory. Where Siepler is going to try and takes a shot. Siepler takes a shot, but a nice save there by Durkee. Durkee doing an uh, excellent job tonight in the key, in the goal. She's got she's made uh, ten saves this evening. Uh, MPU Weekly. Uh, we talked a little bit about on three different teams on campus, as well as uh, men's soccer, volleyball, and women's soccer. Um, coming up this week, the uh, women's soccer team will be hosting Concordia University, Wisconsin, on um, Wednesday evening for a 7 p.m. game. So we hope that you join us on the NPU Live channel to as we will be bringing you all the play-by-play uh, -play of that. Unfortunately, we will not have a um, a play-by-play -play announcer for that game because uh, women's volleyball will also be taking uh, on um, Concordia University Chicago that same evening at the same time. So um, whether you're a volleyball fan or whether you're a women's soccer fan, we hope that you join us either at one of those games or hopefully you can follow them online. Uh, we will be keeping live stats for the women's volleyball match and we will be also be webcasting with live video for the women's soccer match. Um, those are some of the highlights of this week's uh, teams in action. Um, the women's tennis team was also in action uh, this past week. Uh, and uh, they, uh, unfortunately, after, well, um, after getting their first victory of the season over Dominican University um, to start the season, August 28th, uh, by a 72 score, um, they have uh, opened up conference play and uh, have struggled, unfortunately, a little bit um, and not uh, recording a victory. But um, probably the biggest highlight of the women's tennis team uh, right now is the, that of South African and number one singles player Lisa Daniels. Lisa Daniels um, has been doing uh, some solid play, not only in singles competition but at doubles competition 
um, and then she's uh, just been having an entirely strong first year for the Vikings. And um, the women's tennis team, yep, they will be uh, returning to action this Thursday. And uh, to just so recap, it will be um, uh, women's soccer on Wednesday evening as well as volleyball on Wednesday evening, uh, women's tennis, but they are on the, on the road. And then the, the men's soccer team will be returning home this Friday evening when they face Olivet College for a 7 p.m. contest. So once again, we'd like to thank you, everyone, for joining us for another edition of NPU Weekly this week. Um, we will be back next, next Monday evening to uh, talk again with head coach Mike Conway of the football team, and we're hoping to effort another fall coach uh, for that evening. I believe right now Carl Clips and Soderstrom is on our schedule. Uh, he will be joining us for that, uh, that day, so uh, we we'll hope to talk to him and get a couple more updates on the women's tennis team. So, uh, In the meantime, we hope that you continue to uh, follow North Park Athletics, not only on our website, not only on the North Park Athletics Facebook page, but uh, also, you know, on our NPU Live channel as well as live stats and uh, hope that we can keep you up to date with all the uh, news and latest facts and, uh, going on in the world of North Park University Athletics. So thanks once again, everyone, for joining us today, and we hope that you have a great day.